Hello and welcome back to our channel. I'm April, life coach, creator and founder of Lena's Pearls. And this is my husband, Josh. <laughs> Hello. And today we're going to go into our third episode of The Truths About Marriage. And this is part two of our series under needs and wants. What we decided to do as we discussed this series a little bit more is instead of, instead of having two additional parts, we'll combine two. So today what we're going to discuss are baggage and emotional needs. Okay, so we're going to start off with the hurts from, um, I'll say, from the past with family, growing up, just different things that went on in your upbringing and also from exes. So something personal for me was um, I was the youngest out of four. And a lot of times when we had family get togethers, things like that, or even just even if we all got together to go out somewhere, whatever, it was always different conversations that we would have where if somebody was talking, then say if I had my input or a story that related to it, if I started talking, I would always get over talked. And it, it over the years growing up with that, it just kind of made me not want to talk at all. So it took until, I mean, when was it when, as far as in our marriage where it was the very actually, beginnings, it was actually the very, very it, it beginnings. was, it was really, it, it was something that really bothered me a lot because I just always felt like I was never listened to mm -hmm. growing up. Mm -hmm. And, um, for me, I had, friends throughout school and this and that, but never anybody that was close like that where it was like anybody I went to school with, I really don't even talk to today. Other than if they come to my job or something like, hey, what's happening? But I never really had a true best friend like that. Right. So for me, I didn't really have anybody to turn to. So I pretty much became a loner and just it was what it was where I didn't know how to express myself. So even with that and then going into even the past relationships, I, I really, there was times where I couldn't just be myself. I couldn't really let my guard down, I'll say. And that affected me in past relationships. And then when I actually got married, it did play a big effect on us and our communication because I didn't really speak up. I didn't speak my mind. Um, really, it was just like, well, you could probably. Well, and this lends <laughs> itself into and um, this lends itself into it not being because the overall point of this is your spouse is not responsible to heal you from your yes. your upbringing issues and your previous relationships. So what ended up happening with us is and not only that i'll add on like josh is a very loud talker because of being over talked he's one yes. of he's the baby of four kids very loud <laughs> and all of them have big personalities <laughs> so he talks really loud when we first started to date i even told you this on, on our actual first date we're sitting in the car together and he was talking loud and i thought to myself does this guy have a hearing problem you would think he has a hearing <laughs> problem because he and i was sitting there thinking to myself on our little drive on our first date like wow and so, but he's, he just has such a big personality as well as his siblings. So it, it, it will seep itself into other areas of your yes. life. He is very, um, he, it really hurts him when he does not feel that he's being listened to. Now, as his spouse and someone that does love and care about him, you know, it's all about, you know, the truths. Yeah. I had to learn how to communicate with him in some ways. And I mean, I've even had to learn to say to Josh, I'm right here, babe. I'm right here. And that's yeah, just his quite way. Quite a few times. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just his way. You might even hear him with the mic. He might be a little loud. And that's okay because we love Josh. So this is, we don't let Josh be Josh. But um, it also made me very protective of my husband where if he isn't listened to, see, because I'm real direct. 
So um, what I was going to say is it, I had to learn in a loving way to let him know I'm right here. I'm listening to you. But also that's kind of the signal to come bring, bring the tone down just a little bit, just a little bit, mm -hmm. because it sometimes can hurt the eardrums because he does talk loud. <laughs> but it's the way of not hurting yes. his feelings, like, you know, and, and, and making a crutch that he's developed because of his upbringing, something that is you know, um, to further hurt and, and do further damage because I do care. And, you know, I'm big on go to the root, find the root. So in conversation with him, which also lends itself to the second half of that, I had to learn that um, he is that way because the second part of it is not feeling listened to. And but yes. it was also hard to pull that explanation out of Josh because he did clam up. And I just had, and I'm very direct. Everybody that knows me is, I tell you how it is. And that's also part of my, my upbringing mm -hmm. as well. But I had to sit down with Josh one day and, and really face to face. And I said to him, I need yeah. you to stop clamming up. I'm here. I need you to talk to me. Because if you don't tell me what's wrong, we can't work together. We can't fix it. Now, I will say this. Not everybody, and we'll talk about this later, but not everybody is consciously aware. Not everybody is like me, where I'm fully, I'm always present. And I'm about right now, right now, what's the heart of it? So I do advise you that don't take it out on your spouse. Your spouse is not responsible for any of that. You, have, you yeah. really need to identify your truths and know and own the issues. And you might need to seek some counseling. I'm, I am a life coach. I'm not a licensed therapist. You know what I mean? So you have to seek out those couple therapies so that you can get to the heart of it. We have to stop the stigma of counseling. You know, why is it such a bad issue? It's not always yes. bad. Sometimes you need to just have somebody to teach you how to talk to each other. At the end of the day, what's the point? It's the two of you when it's all said and done. Yes, definitely. So, yeah, um, I don't really know if we need. I mean, we can go into some examples of my growing up, but my I was the baby um, of three, just like Josh was the baby of four. And very early in my life, I became an only child. My, we all left early, but my siblings left early. And I, was, I went through a lot of hurt and, and abandonment, abandonment and issues that they didn't endure because my parents actually separated while I was still in middle school. There was like a lot of issues going on in the house, and I pretty much had to raise myself. And so there were those hurts, that strong, independent, this. Me, me, I'm going to, you know, I don't have time. And I was like this. And Josh had to kind of help me through that. But it wasn't his responsibility. So the point overall, and I think we kind of really brought this point home, is yeah. you just have to own the issues and the baggages from your exes, from those people in the past that have hurt you and done yeah, things to you. And I mean, I could talk about, you know, my, my relationships early on, you know, leaving the house early. I went through all... Oh, I was looking for a man to be dad, even though I had a great relationship with both of my fathers. You know what I mean? I just there's just so many factors in that. But you cannot take it out on your spouse. Your spouse is not the one that is supposed to now heal all of that. That's just too much for a person to bear there. You might be needy. You might want to be clingy and underneath them. And you might have a spouse that's OK with that. But you might have a spouse that's not. And you don't know what it is. You think you're just is just love, love, love. But a lot of it is you were alone growing up. So just realize that. Um, just just own that and, and realize that and seek the help that you definitely need and the counseling that you need and or talk to friends and or life coaches or which, whatever your flavor is that you feel like the yeah. level you need is. Talk to someone. We're always here. People so. need people. So. People need people, especially that. Okay. Um, so do you want to go into the next subject, I guess? Yeah. Your spouse may love things about you, and this kind of is another domino effect. We always do mm -hmm. the dominoes, the building bricks. Um, your spouse might love things about you that others didn't. Believe them. Believe them. Um, I have, was very insecure about a lot of things. Um, yes. Not to get too <laughs> personal, but... Yeah. Um, we being real. <laughs> I mean, we always been 100, but I don't know how, I don't know what level. Oh, and we before we get in here, we forgot something. What? We forgot to tell everybody to grab their drinks of choice. Oh, yes, we Tea, did. Tea, coffee, henny. <laughs> and Coffee, and, soda, enjoy tea, Enjoy with me. us. Yes. <laughs> mm. Sorry, I know you guys are probably wondering, what? Josh don't have his drink? Drink a <laughs> drink to the right. Or no, to the left. <laughs> Hers to the right. <laughs> Mine's to the right. So anyway, um, you know... 
Oh, there's so many things I could say. Yeah. So many different things. But um, I know you want to talk about the one. Wow. Natural. <laughs> oh. Yeah, now we can talk about oh, it. Oh, well, I don't even know how to. So, okay, so. so uh, well, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, you say, you say so it. So here's the thing. This is the male perspective. And I always tell her. Now, I'm not saying anything was wrong. I'm, okay, no. go ahead, go ahead. But so most men, I'll say, women have a natural scent. So most men naturally are attracted to their scent. So I don't even know at some point. I don't even know what it was. Anyway. As far as for me with my wife, mm -hmm. I love her natural scent. So there's times that, which she's caught me a few times where I'll actually go in the hamper and pick up a pair of her panties I that she had on. I until I saw that. I was like, and, and really? I'm actually smelling and it turns me on because it's the here's, natural scent and I'm attracted to it. Here's the thing. So <laughs> Here's the thing. Exes in the past. <laughs> Have not yes, disliked correct. the natural scent. However, they preferred like the lotions and the soaps and stuff. And, and I was conditioned to cover it up. And I didn't like it either. I very young age, I've always been, I mean, I used to have more products on my dresser for my nana than I did yeah, from a whole and body. And he forever tried to explain to me, I don't want you to cover it up. I don't have a problem. No. I'm not them. I don't have a problem with it. I want to smell it. I want to smell <laughs> getting so yes. vulgar. No, anyway. it's not vulgar. It's just being real. It's like, I don't, like, oh, if that's what I'm boy, attracted boy, to, boy. if that's what turns me on. How did this go so left? I don't want it to be covered up. Give it to me straight. Like, I want to smell my wife. I mean, if that's what does it for me. And like I said, most men, some men might not tell you that, but a, a real man is going to let you know because when they smell that smell, automatically... Even if they haven't connected with it yet, at some point in their life, they're going to realize when they smell that smell from whoever they're with, it's automatically they're going to be aroused. We might need to go to another example. Let's, let's get off of this. <laughs> well, I'm just, hey, it, it's Ooh. being real. Okay, so it's not just sense. It could be your physical appearance. It yeah. could be, you know, you might think that your breasts are too small and you've been hurt by previous lovers or whatever someone has said something that yeah. has left something on you and, and developed an insecurity about you that your spouse loves mm -hmm. your your spouse loves it and when they tell you believe them that's what the believe point really is and even okay, yeah another one so she's said yeah i was always a big butt man the booty man he loved a dog but regardless she always talking about she got a little bump no she's her butt is just fine and i love it that's it's <laughs> I didn't say you didn't like my little No, butt. but you always act like you ain't, you got a butt. It ain't like you ain't got nothing back there. Like I got a little something. It ain't even little. No, it's not little. It's more than like, see, that's, see, practice what you preach. Yes. practice. <laughs> Listen, we're not saying we don't struggle with some of this stuff. And in my individual videos that I do on this channel, I always say I still struggle yes. with some stuff. This is about being real and transparent. That's what this is all about. <laughs> Okay, go ahead with the next yes. subject. Let's get off of that. Okay. You got the point. <laughs> so, I'm sure. So next we're going to talk about your spouse is not your ex. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, so, Which we did touch on things in the previous video, but... Um, yes, honey. Tell it. I'll say for me. I always try to refer to me in different right. things that we talk about. So, like, I had one ex that we had sex all the time. Mm -hmm. constantly mm -hmm. there was times we would be coming back from somewhere and end up pulling off somewhere and get in the car get out and get on the hood of the car this and that yada yada and but that's what it was with me and that person that was just the attraction we had even though everything else might not have been there but it was just mm -hmm. that so you have to realize when you actually find that one and you do get married become one it might not be popping like that mm -hmm. even though Traction might still be there. Everything else might be there, but it just might not be popping like that. Right. And that's where you have to realize that, especially for me, I say I had to realize what it was because, of course, with that certain person, there was no kids involved. There was no careers involved. Their lights and Where once you get married and you have everything in a hole with the kids, the careers and everything else. Mm hmm it ain't always going to be jumping off like that. But too, it's also the the simplest, and if we just want to keep using the sex as an example just to build on that, you know, 
you have to understand that, and we did talk about this a lot in our first episode of this. Different strokes for different folks. Some people just have different sexual needs than your spouse yes. may have. And what turns your spouse on, you know, is different than it might have been a little easier for that last person. It might not have taken much for that other person. That yes. person might, their, their, their mental and all the other factors may not have needed to play a part to warm them up. And your spouse is like, you looked at me wrong, so now you got to work on what it's going to yes. take to warm me back up for sex. You can't just talk to your spouse any kind of way. Maybe you were that, that chick didn't or that man didn't care. Yeah. You know, so, you know, just within keeping, you know, that the sex is an, as an uh, example, you have to understand and now learn. And we talked about this. You have to learn what works for your spouse. Yes. Your spouse is not your ex. Your spouse is not going to turn in your ex. And let's go here with it. Obviously, <laughs> it's a reason why you didn't marry that person or that person didn't yes. marry you. Exactly. So. Be grateful for it. And we also talked about the fact that, unfortunately, even in some marriages, sex is all you got. You got other stuff you need to work on. Yeah. So almost, I want to say, almost be grateful for the fact that your spouse is not your ex. There was a reason you did not marry that person. And so you need to embrace that. There is something that you saw in your wife or your husband that just stood out and is just, and embrace that. And now you need to, remember, we talked about, in the first um, part one of this with, you know, sex, you have to learn and get rid of them old habits and get that yes. out of your mindset. And you cannot punish this person for being not them. Be it, they were better with funding. You know, we'll get into all this in another yeah. part because we're going to do finances next. Yeah, but, yeah. You, you know, it's you just so many aspects. Scratch. We always talk about sex for some reason, but I mean, I guess that's one of the most common <laughs> So I'd be trying to use other examples. Sex just always seems to be Well, I'll say so as another example. Then. <laughs> I'm not so, complaining, babe. No, I'm just saying. But I'll say as another example, um, with my wife versus different people I was in a relationship, I could talk any kind of way and this and that and yada yada and I'm getting tired of saying yada yada too. Oh, then don't say it, but, babe. So anyway. Say blah, So blah, blah. with... With April, it was, um, she's very sensitive when I talk a certain way. And I might not be upset with her, or it might even not be against her, but if I say the wrong things, she takes offense to it. Where in the past, I could say whatever, and it was, no, oh, I don't like how you said that, nothing. But with her, so I had to learn certain things I can't say, certain mm -hmm. tones I can't use mm -hmm. because she would take offense to it. Mm -hmm. So it, and it's honestly, not just sex. go both ways because I remember I said something to you and it wasn't even like a negative thing. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. I mean, let's grow something I said to you and you took offense. But see, the also remember, and that goes way back into the very first video on this channel, you know, stop second guessing and downing your emotions. You have to learn your triggers and why so that you can explain to them. Yes. I had even said in that video, my, so he's confirming what I said. I'm very sensitive to how I'm spoken to because of previous relationships and so forth and so on. But I'm also able to communicate that with him because I'm present and I know and have and have learned to identify my triggers as well as, you know, Josh has learned to do the same thing. You, you're yeah. really pretty much in tune with you. But so I was able to communicate with him that. These are the reasons why past relationships. That's why it's all about communication. But these, this is right, why. So was yeah, we were, next day yeah. Much. So if you want, did you want to go into that? <laughs> well, you just started yeah. Going so into the next, <laughs> the next subject is communication. You know, speak up, express yourself, learn yourself. You. This is why we even talked about this in the very first episode. You have to be a whole and complete and total person before you merge your life with somebody yeah. because you're going to need to be able to have these conversations. You're going to have to be able to communicate and speak about what you don't like, yeah. why you don't like it, what you do like, why you like it, you know, um, and if something bothers you along the way, you have to be have that bond and that comfort and trust built up so that you can say, yo, wait a minute, you know, or hey, babe, listen, <laughs> you know, I mean, whatever the tone is, you know, and, and, and because you love and care about your spouse and it's, you're not enemies and you, you want peace yes. in your home and you want a good marriage, listen and yeah. accept it. And exactly. work on it. They're not coming to... Don't be so offensive. Don't be so quick yes. to get an attitude and feel some kind of way. 
because they're trying to reach out and explain to you so that it's for the betterment of the total union for both of you. Definitely. Did you want to add anything to communication and speak up? We talked yeah, a little bit about thing. it with the it's, whole it's, clamming up. And well, it's just more not just speaking up, but but actually taking the time to listen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because there's times where someone is talking and you're not actually focused. You're not actually taking it in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're listening, but you're not listening. Right, right. And that's where you, you really have to pay attention. And, and that's part of showing love it, it, is, is actually being attentive, listening and mm -hmm. taking it in and putting it in your head mm -hmm. in that little memory that, oh, OK, so this is what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And if especially if they give you examples. So then it's real like, OK, let me put all of that inside mm -hmm. so you can remember to try your hardest not to do it again. Right. And, and learn from your mistakes. But if you're not listening, then... Right. Because it's not just sexual. We talked about yes. that in the very first... And I will keep referring back to the first episode. But this is a sequence. So we do advise you to watch the sequence. You know, we'll link it down below <laughs> for your convenience. But, you know, it is about learning them. And learning what yes. works. And old habits dying. So that you can be a better friend, lover, companion. You know, to your mate. That's really what it's yes. all about. Why'd you get married otherwise? Like... That's what it's all about. It's work. You know, someone told me for it to work, you got to work at it. Yes. I and mean, it does you know, pay off. I yes, will say it does. That. <laughs> yes, it does. It really does. And we'll do something on that as well. But it, we're saying all of these things. We just really want you guys to be OK. And we just really are trying to promote healthy, you know, and take the stigmas off and, and, and you know, discuss some things so that everybody realizes a lot yes. of this is universal. There, You'd be surprised some of the stuff you're going through that everybody's going through. Everybody just not telling you. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. So we're going to the next one? Sure. I'm ready. Okay. So uh, your spouse is not responsible for your happiness. Right. Your total and complete happiness. And again, we did life. talk about this. Well, we touched on it before. Where right. You can't expect to get married and just fall into this basket of happiness and everything is good and no it, it's right right it's between your you and your your spouse between mm -hmm. you and your kids between mm -hmm. the job between the bills mm -hmm. between everything mm -hmm. you actually have to learn yourself and, and get comfortable with yourself be happy with who you are and be able to share that happiness with your spouse with your kids and, and know the difference. Right. If you have a bad day, even whether you had a disagreement, when you go to work, most people don't take it to work. Mm -hmm. Then there's some people that do take it to work. True. But you have to know the difference and be able to to kind of control that, control work, control home, and and make yourself happy. Right. Right. There's some people that okay, you get home. And I'll say for, for me, there's times that if I get home and she's not home, I'm kind of happy. Like, oh, I can get a little bit of time by myself. <laughs> like I could just relax and do nothing or I could just sit in the shower and just sit on, on the bench in the shower and just chill for a little bit. Well, or when I leave the or, house before you do. Yeah. Yeah. And I enjoy some his it's, having Saturdays <laughs> to myself. Everybody that knows Josh personally knows Josh is working on Saturdays and I get my little morning to myself and. The house to myself, especially now that the kids are gone. And shoot, even when the kids were home, I used to enjoy that quiet. Yes. They would sleep late. He was gone before they thought about getting up. And I could sit and have a cup of coffee to myself. And, exactly. you know, the overall point, too, with happiness is happiness is a choice. Yes. And happiness is based on you as an individual. Now, your spouse can do things that make you happy. Yeah. But that you're the but burden overall, is not yes. theirs no. to keep you happy. No, it's not even realistic to expect someone and to put that burden on someone to make you happy. No one can make you do anything that those are all personal choices. But that's why it's key in a marriage to make sure that you don't lose your total self. There's a difference between dying to yourself. And we may even touch on that yeah. in, this, in this series. Um, but you have to still know and identify those things that you enjoy doing. You have to you know, if you like to go bowling, if you like to play music, if you still want to be in a band if you so i mean of course everything is about scheduling and shifting things will shift life is a yeah. shift we talked about that also 
it is a constant adjustment and change. But that does not mean you no longer identify and know the things that fulfill you and yeah. make you happy as a person. Like me, I'm content sitting in a room to myself with a book for hours. I, where, where I, with, with me, I could, I, it was one time she was working in the den and I came out in the sunroom, put the surround sound on and, the, he the, can sit and, and listen to music. put my phone and, and just had music blasting with the door closed and I was just enjoying he myself with a drink and... But you, you, have, know, to you have to have that, that you for have. you. Right. <laughs> you have to know what makes you happy. Your spouse, it, you just cannot put that burden on your spouse. Your spouse is not there to make all of your, your emotional, um, self-emotional needs yes. and fulfillment. They're, that's just not what they're there that's for. That's why I say, if any, you should be able to be happy with yourself. Exactly. And then share that with your spouse. That's like... To me, yeah. that's one of the ultimate goals of... Right. Now, they're not supposed to make you unhappy and make you miserable no, either. And that's, a whole right. nother... <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> um, another part of the emotional needs that we wanted to get into is be present and being conscious, conscientious within your marriage. So what we mean by that is it is a in the work. You have to be... You cannot just think that this thing is going to work on its own. There are some things that are just naturally going to work because you two just naturally, there's this, that natural yes. connection and so forth and so on. But you have to be conscious of the needs. Remember, we said you have to discover them and you have to work on them, but you have to be conscious to keep working on them. You have to Definitely. consciously look at your marriage and go, I need you to myself for a while. We haven't had that moment. When's the last time I said I love you? When's the last time, if you used to write them love notes, when's the last time you did that? Did they respond well to that? You know, when's the last time you sent flowers? flowers? Yeah. I've even sent him fruit baskets and teddy bears and stuff like that because I thought, darn, you know, I just want to show him how I feel about him. It goes beyond those man crush Mondays and all the Facebook stuff. We have really, the social media has just, just, whew, Yeah, because forget I sharing go, stuff. Just, I just go on a dad make on. sure you doing something for your spouse. Exactly. Got to be put out there for other people to see exactly. you doing it. Just do it yes. because of your spouse. Exactly. Period. Because the internet could go down a day or tomorrow and you're just going to be looking <laughs> at each other like, now what? So you have to, you have to, um, you know, there's something that you always say and I love it. And I, I know you're not the owner of the saying, but I love your version of it. And, and what you say, you, you, you even taught the kids this, that, you know, you can't keep making withdrawals oh, yes. without making any deposits. Yes. You're going to be in a negative. You yes. have to be conscious to consciously, conscientiously, and be present enough to, to put those deposits in. Yeah. Because those are the things that you're going to sometimes withdraw out when you need them. When, when you're both going through the storm. When you're both and, dealing with and, things. But too, that's not even with just you and your spouse. That's whether friends, family, co-workers. It, it, it's hand in hand. Where if, if you're not communicating and, and telling somebody that they did something good then how can, you know what I mean? It's but but, but yet you're quick, oh, well, you did this wrong, mm -hmm. you did that wrong, mm -hmm. you did this, but mm -hmm. if you're not telling, well, you did a good job. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did that oh, good. Like, wow, oh, I wish I would have thought about doing mm -hmm. that. It, like, if you're not being positive and, and, and constantly putting something positive in, how can you expect to get something positive out? Exactly. It's, it's exactly. no way. And you walking around the house miserable with each other and you don't even know why. Well, when's the last <laughs> time you actually told your wife that her cooking was good? When the exactly. last time you told your husband, babe, thanks for putting gas in my car. I know I left it on E and you had to take the next day. You know, thanks, babe, for, you know, helping me with the kid. Like, when's the last time you did that? Yeah. That's what we mean about step outside of you. Because the problem is a lot of times with marriage, you always think about what you're getting with you, 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 you. And you need to start looking at what can I be? What yeah. can I do? What can I give? How can I build them up? Um, that it, and being, I mean, we could be yeah. here all year about just being present and being conscientious. Well, just like last night, like, so <laughs> my brother hit me up. We was supposed to uh, get yeah. together for drinks. Last minute. Well, both my brothers and <laughs> last it minute. was last minute. So I get home and I'm, you know, waiting to get in to ask my wife, look, you want to go out mm -hmm. with us for drink? And she's cooking. Cause he forgot about an earlier conversation yeah. we had in the morning. And, and normally I'm always cooking a lot but he so when i seen she was cooking i hit him up like look i look i ain't gonna come out like <laughs> april's cooking 
Like, yeah, we had a conversation I'm ready to sit early down. in the morning. <laughs> I said to you, I said, babe, you know, we need to take something out for dinner. What are you going to want later for dinner? And I said, oh, I'll just, you know, we had gotten like some stuff. And I said, oh, we need to get yeah, that I stuff I completely forgot about it. And he completely <laughs> forgot. But his brother actually hit him up when he was leaving work. And so his natural instinct is, yeah, no problem. And he gets home and he smells the food cooking. And he's like, oh, darn. And I said, babe, you don't remember? And, you know, he was like, darn, you know. And truth be told... I think it was really supposed to be a guy's night out, but bro was like, bring sis if you want to, yeah. whatever, whatever. And I told him, go ahead. If after if you want to just eat and go ahead, go ahead. And he's still, you know, but that's a deposit. You know, those deposits are so subliminal sometimes you don't even realize. Yes. You just, you really truly need to learn your mate. You do. Because it, it, you know, what works for us, like we've always said, may not work for you. We just have to learn what works for you yeah. and what your wife and your so go ahead, babe. You want to go into the next thing? Yeah. Oh, that really honestly so, leads itself into this. Yeah. What is it? Learn. Learn how they receive. Yeah, give and receive love. Right. Love yeah, languages. that is kind of what that we does, was already Yeah, we were heading towards so. that. <laughs> so anyway, did you so want to introduce it? Or? <laughs> well, it's kind of introduced itself already. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so you have to learn how to give and receive love, yes. which pretty much we were just talking right. about. Right, how they receive it. Because yeah. something so simple as, say, if she's packing lunch for me in the morning, mm -hmm. that's out of love. Because, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I could do it myself, but because she wants to do it for me, it's something that's done out of love. Right. No different than if I cook and she washes dishes, she cooks, I wash dishes, mm -hmm. same thing. If somebody puts the, the clothes in the washer and I put them in the dryer, or she ends up folding them or I fold them. It, it's so many different ways yeah. of, of, of love. It's right. just it's not just about the relationship. Mm -hmm. it, same thing even with the kids versus, okay, well, Josh got in trouble in school today. Mm -hmm. So who's going to say something type of thing? Mm -hmm. And do you wait for me to get home or do you go ahead and address it? So I don't have to deal with it when I get home because who knows? I might have had a bad day. I might not feel like dealing with it. Mm -hmm. But that's where we're at. it's the done out of love. It's love it's because <laughs> it's really considerations in love. Yes. Too. But the flip side of that too is knowing that that's how he will accept and be and feel loved because yes. that's what we're really. You have to know what they need in order to feel the love from you. Because you're, and, and, and it's not the same. You know, your way of giving it may not be the way they receive it. So you have to yes. learn and also yes. communicate the ways that you receive love. Definitely. You know, some people feel like, you know, being the breadwinner and keeping you in the latest and keeping the bills paid and making sure you want for nothing. That's their way of, of giving love. Yeah. But even though you might love and appreciate them, that does not make you necessarily feel like love. And I had to teach my husband that a little bit. Because my husband spoils me rotten. You do. However, he had to learn that I need affection. I need presence. Yes. And I mean, we do go on trips. Everybody knows that we go on trips. But for me, it's that sitting in front of him and just being able to have a conversation with him without texting or calling or yes. something like that. And for me, it's about the experiences with him, not so much the purses and the da 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 da. Yeah. Um, and I say that, you say yada yada, and I say da 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 a lot. But anyway, <laughs> so you have to learn how your mate is giving it to, because too, even though you don't receive it that way, learn that that's their way of saying I love you and yeah. accept it. Because honestly, there's no right or wrong way to this. It's no, your it way. Yeah. It's what works for you. I say this all the time. It works mm -hmm. what works for you. You know, you don't beat him upside the head because he paid a bill and, or fixed the car. And that's how he feels like I showed my wife. I, I took it. I love her. And she's looking at you like, well, you could have just bought me roses. Like, that's not how mm -hmm. I feel. Don't do that to each other. Learn it. And then the way you learn it, going back to being conscious and present, thank them. Because you're thanking them and acknowledging what they did to show you yes. love will blow them over. Definitely. And those are going back to the deposits. and Yeah. Things of that sort. So, yeah. Did you want to add any more to that? Because that's pretty much. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it's it. a long drawn subject. Because everybody you always hear somebody talk about love language, love language. That's what we people mean when they say love language. Learn their love language and, yes. and how to grow and, and hone in on that and work on that. Um, I guess we can just go into the the boundaries. Then you need yeah. to learn. So you have to learn 
their boundaries and what they need from you to feel secure in the marriage with you and in your relationship with you. So Josh and I were talking about this. Um, we'll even go here as an example. You know, I know as a woman that they're going to be after my husband. Okay. For me to feel secure in our marriage, I need to know that he's checking them. It's not that I don't realize that he's going to be sought after. Shoot, I want him. I know somebody else want him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but my thing is check him. Now that's for me. That's the boundary that he's learned through communication and all everything we've been talking about. That's how he's learned from me yes. that I need to feel secure and I need to the boundaries that I needed to be not crossed and don't even entertain them. But if you do check them, you know, and then if you want to give like an example of one of your boundaries and how I make you feel secure, because it's different for everybody. But you do need to learn that um, you need to learn what your spouse feels is flirtation. Because what I might consider flirtation, you guys might not feel is considered flirtation. Josh might not yeah. even consider it flirtation. But I'm going to tell him, look, this is what it is. You cannot assume. It's a constant learning of one another. Yes. And what that person needs to feel assured and feel that you're being loyal. Because some people, like for me, loyalty is big for me. Loyalty and not being fake. And I'm very straight up. Everybody knows me knows that. And it may not be as important to other people. You know, other women might not care. Other women might like you flirting. It might turn them on. You know, you just, you don't know. Whatever works in your marriage works in your marriage. You know, so you have to learn those boundaries. And you have to learn what the person needs from you to feel secure and Definitely. locked in. And that you're in this. And it's all about them. You know, it could be a simple show them. You know, or let them do the responding or, you know, whatever yeah. it is, you know. But you have to, because it's work. No, because I've done that before, too. Oh, yeah, he Where has. I, I, I've just said, look at this, look at this, babe. Yeah, she ain't catching look it. I got her all day long for you. <laughs> and I stay ready. Bags packed. I have frequent flyer miles for it. Trust when I tell you, when it comes to mind. So, and anybody that knows us knows when it comes to mind. Family, friends, whatever. I'm, I, I stay ready when it comes to Mr. Josh over here. So, you know, I'm a little bit more verbal. <laughs> than he is he's quiet if you see him coming it's a problem but he ain't gonna say too much <laughs> yeah. i don't need to say much <laughs> i'm like rah, 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 and rah, rah, rah. he's standing behind me and i'm like josh behind me because everybody got quiet and i was going off <laughs> anyway we're so off topic babe is it the wine and the drinks <laughs> maybe so yeah that's it so Long did you want to yeah so did you want to add anything else to no, our I mean, part two I think, of i think we covered ones? everything okay so we yeah. want to discuss the, um, the giveaway. So as you know, we want you to subscribe, like, and subscribe, 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 subscribe. <laughs> we're trying to get the channel to a thousand or more subscribers. And what we're doing with the giveaway is we're going to give the thousandth subscriber, a hundred dollar visa or American express gift card to use for the holidays. Also, we're going to also randomly or, give, or, or even if it ain't a gift card, we might, might just hit you with a hundred dollars off the cash app or paypal yeah, or something whatever we like, decide yeah that, that's, that works saying. too and then we're also gonna <laughs> because you have to you know it takes the collaboration of everyone subscribing and we love and appreciate all of our subscribers so we'll randomly pick a subscriber to also receive the hundred dollars as well yeah okay subscribe <laughs> subscribe look I mean, here's my thing with the subscription. Oh, here we go subscribers whatever you want to call them if you know somebody got YouTube on their phone and you're close friends with them, take their phone out of their hand, search Lena's Pearls, and hit subscribe, and then hand their phone back. Tell them they don't have to watch the videos, but just get some more subscribers. And look, who knows? Yeah. I'd be like, look, you about to get some money coming to you. Let me get some of that, and, and hey. <laughs> also, share the video. That also helps us. Share yes. the video, like, subscribe, share. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be alerted anytime we upload. Feel free to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. That information will be below. Also, lastly, if you have any questions or comments or you have any content ideas or you need some advice and you want to share in confidence, email us at lenaspearls4 at gmail.com. We, we do not share anything that's emailed to us. Everything is in confidence. I still don't have an email. But if y'all email her, y'all can say this is addressed to your husband. Yeah, address it to Josh. You know, and I, um, I keep forgetting. Yet. I need to start it. Also, okay, this video is going to be an hour long. 
Also, don't forget to comment down below and um, open up the discussion about this. Thanks so much for spending all of this time with our crazy selves. Yeah. We do appreciate it. Anything else, babe? No. <laughs> Glasses up. Until next time, <laughs> take care, guys. <laughs> <laughs>